Is that better? Is that cool? Man, I feel like it's not as wide a frame as it should be. All right. Hopefully you can hear. Uh, let me share it on yours real quick. Hit, hit space bar. Yeah. Can you entertain people while I'm... Uh... So, uh, this episode is sponsored by Little Tiny Bottles of Deer Park. Um, not Deer Park, but specifically Little Tiny Bottles of Deer Park. Uh, we couldn't get the full, you know, the full endorsement of the entire Deer Park organization. Um, Deer Park is a Nestle's Water North America product, and they were not on board. But tiny little bottles of Deer Park, they were on board. It's actually just like three guys in like an office space. So. Yes, yes. Once again. Why are you shouting? I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I uh, just want to make sure. Actually, let's just take a minute to make sure there's no sound issues. Marilyn, are there any sound issues? Is there any squeaking, jumping? Oh, come on, already? Don't we literally me. just started. Oh, it's crops too close. Yeah, that's fine. It, cropping too close is not a problem. What sounds do you hear? Reverb. Reverb. Oh, move all phones and everything. I can't move my phone. There shouldn't be any reverb because we just turned off the, uh, what you call it? Reverb. All right. What about now? Is it better? Oh, God, what weird noises. Nothing, I mean, nothing's on but the computer. Yeah, it should be good. Describe the noises, Marilyn. Shower static? Maybe if you unplug the, the power? It's good now? Would it just... Oh, I... <laughs> I really Let's just buy a studio. Let's yeah, just, we really do. <laughs> Let's just buy... A, what about now? Was it like immediately okay? Right? Okay. Johnny here's No, late. Johnny's late though. But remember, this is uh this is delayed. So whatever we fix, if it fixes, we won't know we'll until they say. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, welcome all eight of you to another exciting episode of Ten Minutes with Ronald. The show that nobody asked for, yet somebody, eight people, are watching. So far. All right, Don't I'm move. not going to move at all. Same, same okay. exact same. Here we go. All right, nice shirt. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'm here live in Mass Potential Studios with my good friend Mass Potential's <laughs> studio. <laughs> He's friends with the studio. I'm just... my, friend, my good friend Mass Potential. Man, now the camera's messed up. Man, hold on. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> Literally the worst. <laughs> Don't you tilt it up some? Never mind. Because it's not helping. It's not helping. <laughs> yeah. All right. Don't touch anything. Don't move. You guys don't move either. I don't want anybody right. to move. Nobody move. This is the static episode. Oh, don't touch the table. Yeah, don't this touch is the anything. static episode of 10 Minutes with Ronald. I'm, all right. I'm here so for, I'm here we are here. Yeah. Oh, all of you, everybody hit share. Everybody hit share right now. Wherever you are, hit share. Hit the yes. share button. Yes. Let's get these views up. Tell everybody I'm live right now. We're going to be on for a short amount of time. Or a long amount of time? Yeah. For amount of time. Yeah. The amount if of you're time. friends with somebody name share, don't hit that person. Hit share. Don't hit share, please. Yes. Please don't. <laughs> ben, ben said nine minutes with Ronald, one minute of time. <laughs> yeah, that's so accurate. It's like Thank you, Ben. We're gonna we're coming but we're gonna get better though. We're gonna yeah, get better. Every every time we're gonna I'm get already better. starting to fry. Oh, why am I wearing a hat? Because of my hairline and I haven't gotten a haircut. I just got a haircut today, otherwise I So you don't understand the struggle. I'm saying hats. that because I know Johnny was gonna ask, so but yeah, that's the only reason why I would wear a hat at night. Anyway, uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about something that you and I discussed already yep. in a forthcoming episode of Talking Loud, Saying Nothing, yep. which is Locker Room Talk. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what brings us to Locker Room Talk is what happened recently with presidential candidate, Republican presidential candidate, Donald Trump. I don't like that. What? I just don't even like that title. That he's Republican presidential candidate? Just call him Trump. Just like call him the least amount of words you can say to identify him. Okay. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald J. Trump. And Stanford rapist Brock <laughs> Turner. I just like to bring yeah. that up again. Just, yeah. Just Stanford rapist Brock Turner. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Republican presidential candidate uh, Donald Trump was caught on tape in 2005 saying something graphic, deciding, uh, hey, Maya, deciding, uh, describing women's parts. Yes. Again, everyone share with your friends. Let's go. Uh, so that being said, mm -hmm. he his defense in it came out that it was locker room talk. Yes. That it was locker room talk. Yes. Uh, 
And that's what we want to talk about today. We okay. kind of want to talk about what locker room talk is, who does it, and is it okay? What exactly do men talk about in, in, in when it pertains to women, and how? Like, let's just let's talk about it all. Okay. So the first I mean, thing, I mean, what, what what do you think locker room talk is? I think as described, like, what do I think? Yeah. JT and you don't have to. When he said it, DJ two. DJ two. No, no, no. You mean Republican president? DJ two. Sorry. What What do you think? Like, tell me what you think it is. I mean, I think it's. I think. I don't. I don't have a definite. I don't refer to locker room talk. It's not locker room talk for me. So I can only talk about what I think Trump okay. what he means. And I think what he means is he means the kind of conversations that men have with each other when there's it's when there's just men around, and more than just that, but like in high testosterone environments, like Absolutely. a locker room, like a you know, like a I don't know, like a car garage, mm-hmm. like that kind of environment. Um, and I think he just means like lewd and and. Um, disgusting comments that would not be made in the presence of a woman or at least most women i'm sure we all know some women who would probably participate in the same kinds of conversations i'm hearing lewd and disgusting comments uh not said in the presence of women let's actually take that and set it to the side for a second okay. and i'd like to introduce you a new definition of locker room talk which i actually think is pretty appropriate i was listening to a, a podcast with w kamal bell called politically reactive you all should listen to it it's an excellent podca- podcast podcast And he described it as this. He said, to me, locker room talk is teenage boys bragging in a locker room about things they've never done. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yes, that's exactly (laughs) what locker room talk is. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So then the question, it calls it a question. So let's accept that as our definition. Okay. Why are two grown men having locker room talk? Why is a, 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 how old was Billy Billy, uh, Bush? Bush. That's almost called him Billy Blanks. Uh, Billy Jean. <laughs> <laughs> why is Billy Bush and uh, 50, I don't know how old he was at the time, uh, in 2005, why, were they having, old. why would they be having locker room talk on a bus, mic'd up and hot mics? Like, why is that okay? I don't know. And they were mic'd up with yeah. hot mics. I'm sorry, that's not a part of it. But yeah. that just that that part is just more of the ridiculousness that is. Absolutely. DJ Trump. It just doesn't make sense. Um, I, I don't know. And mm. and I, I think so we had a conversation. I don't wanna I don't know how you have this formatted to you know to yeah. go on. To no, we'll, ground, go, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. But we had the conversation and, and I think the conclusion we came to I feel like is, is slightly more accurate and that is I would I would argue that most locker room talk, most of these conversations of this type are still in the realm of teenage boys have you know but there's always like one person that i feel like leads it like mm-hmm. there's always one person i think introduces it i think Absolutely. everybody's like good game that was fantastic oh mm-hmm. did you see the way i you know you know did you see the way i dunked on what is his name well you know and then they're like oh yeah did you see that girl in the front row with the big like whoa <laughs> whoa <laughs> you know there's always that one guy that like jumps into it yeah and and whether or not he is experienced in the ways he claims or isn't, I just feel like there's always one. This one, like it starts off with this one aggressive guy that like jumps into it, and then you have the guy, and then you have then you have the two camps, right? Yeah. And, and we can talk more about that. I don't know if you want to introduce it. Yeah. But we have the two camps, right? We have the guys who just kind of quietly accept that it's happening, mm. and then we have the guys who kind of like join in. Okay. Um, but I still feel like there's usually like one guy who like gets it started, and it's usually not a connection. Mm-hmm. There's usually like we're talking about something related. We're talking about something positive, with the right, just something sociable. Mm-hmm. And then one guy just like comes in with a sledgehammer and just you know what I mean, just Gallagher's the whole conversation and it's just like yo boobs. So <laughs> so I definitely think so. I like I think what you're saying. I think there's a. Uh, there's a spectrum of dudes that are doing this. Yeah. Within the locker room, there is always one person that initiates this type of banter. And right. not and not even locker room. Let's, let's throw the locker room out of here and let's just say amongst men, amongst groups of men talking. Go ahead. Somebody made a really good comment. I, I don't remember what it was. It was a famous comedian. I think he said it on Twitter. But he was like, uh, oh, it was uh, Betty Hill? White. It was okay. Betty White. She was like, I don't think Trump's ever been in a locker room before in his life, so he wouldn't know locker room talking to the There were several athletes that <laughs> said that as well. But within groups of men, there's always, uh, and I think most men, even the ones that are watching this right now, could definitely attest to the fact that there are many men out there who have a friend who is very disgusting. Yes. You always have one friend who's very yeah. disgusting. Yeah. I think the baseline of most people in general mm-hmm. is that most people definitely look at the opposite sex 
or in some cases the same sex. Mm -hmm. uh, most people look at other people and find them attractive yeah. um, and view them in some sort of way. Right. Uh, and I think there's only a certain type of person, we'll call them the apex predator, yes, <laughs> who really just has to describe and talk about everything about this person, like descriptive yeah, activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once that person gets started talking in that way, mm -hmm. there are a larger number of people who won't stop that person, whether yes. they feel good about it or not. Yes, yes. And I think that's where it, it, it begins to... Uh, to kind of disseminate into it seems like a whole crowd is talking about a woman yeah. when it's really probably one or two yeah, people yeah. Oh, yeah. and the other one, one of them are egging him on. In yeah. this particular case, Donald Trump was the apex predator in this case. Oh, yeah. And Billy, and Bush, yeah. Billy Bush was just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's a good example. I think that's a good example of, you know, it's it's these comments that are so, like, lewd and, and just, like, graphic but it's not like these aren't necessarily thoughts that haven't been had, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you can look at an attractive woman and be like, hmm, right? But it, that's but if you're a good person, that's usually as far as it can go, right? Mm -hmm. You're not like yeah. you're not like, you know what I mean? You're not. Yeah. It's so I think it's an example. I think it's an example of you know Trump having you know given the green light for this kind of conversation. And while Billy couldn't actively participate, I mean mm. he did say some things, but oh, while he couldn't go in, mm. like while you know what I mean, he felt comfortable now trying started sharing some of the thoughts that he probably had had. And so he felt like it was almost like they were both in his head. Mm -hmm. Like that conversation shouldn't have existed at all. Mm. But because Trump introduced it, now it's like it's cool here for mm. a little well, but I don't know that Billy. I don't know that Billy would have introduced that, or maybe Billy's not a good example. But I wouldn't argue that most people who participated in that conversation mm. wouldn't necessarily introduce that conversation. I I, I think you create a bad space where people where it's like okay. I definitely think that you have to open the door for that conversation to be had. But I think the argument here, and we'll kind of go into that in a minute. Yeah. But I I think the door has to be open for that conversation to be had. That's the first thing. Yeah, yeah. The second thing is most people that are engaging or that have been roped into this type of conversation are not necessarily proponents no. of treating women this way or right. acting this way. Right. This is why I want to kind of dispel this notion of locker room talk. Yeah. Because I feel like if we call it what it is, which is teenage boys <laughs> bragging about things they've never done, I, I, then there's like no that. reason in the world why grown men right. should be engaging in this type of discussion. Right. And if you think about it, even the dudes in this room, again, I know people, I know the people that are watching right now, and I know a lot of these people have friends. Oh. <laughs> there's three other, that's right, they were! And they all got off quietly. Oh no, I didn't even, I didn't yeah, know you didn't realize, yeah, I they, did not. They all got off before Donald and yeah. Billy Bush. That makes me crazy. even more disgusting. Yeah. But then and now I'm mad at them. They weren't engaged in the conversation. Yeah, but, like, but I mean, I mean, they weren't whispering. But here's the thing: if there's five dudes in a room and th two of them are talking about something you don't want to be involved in, are you going to go over there and be like, "Hey, you two, stop talking about that"? Or are you going to be like, "I don't want to be a part of this. I'm going to stay over here"? Because that's what those three might have been doing. What would I do, or what should I do? Because what I would I do, mm. nothing. But what should I do? Let's mm. probably shut it down. Well, see, but that's my problem. Okay, but so that's like superhero. That's not my problem. That is superhero level. But my problem is there's five dudes in a room, and if I want to be as far away from those two other dudes as possible. Yeah. I def Here we go right there. And this is probably part of my argument. I talked to a friend who actually <laughs> I talked to a friend who said, Ron, you're in the minority of dudes who don't talk like this. Yeah. And I'm like, no. I, I just don't believe that. No. I don't believe that to be true. No. I definitely think the majority of my friends don't run around talking about women in this kind of way. We're froze. Uh, talk about women in this kind of way. Keep going. And we're live again. Uh, so I think there's a lot of people that talk about that don't that talk that don't talk about this women in this type of way. Mm -hmm. However, uh, it seems that there is some sort of stigma or there's some sort of green light to say that this is okay for men to talk this way about women, mm -hmm. and I just don't think that's the case. Yeah, I agree with you. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. What? Man, and you yeah. too, Ben. Thank you. Yeah, we don't uh, do that. Why are you apostrophe R E? Listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't go with my man. Johnny. <laughs> no, don't I go with Johnny. Johnny. No, I, I no, I think you're absolutely right. I think again, I think it's I think it is that small number and they just you know, I, I think there is some there is some there is some uh, conversation that's that is had amongst just you know, just men, but I, I feel like it's not this. It's not what Trump it's not what Trump's describing. Absolutely. It's usually something very simplistic mm. and brief. Yeah. Like, oh, oh that girl's fine and we move on. Absolutely. Right? It's not like 
and then like it's not like yeah. you know what I mean and and I feel like there's one guy right who there's like this room of like ridiculousness mm -hmm. and there's one guy who will just kick that door down and just be like hey y'all like let's and then and then like you said then you've got those then you've got those two camps the people who kind of just casually uh, yeah, participate yeah, whatever, you know? right. and I think that's a part and I think that's a, again a part of mass you know the fragileness of male masculinity, right? It's like, okay, we jump in because we don't want to not jump in. We don't want to be like the, the the dissenting voice here. We want to mm -hmm. join, you know what I mean? And so, you know, but but I even, I, but I think it, it kind of goes in other directions. I think this is just a really bad example of it. But, you know, if a bunch of men start talking about football, I'm be like, yeah, pigskin. <laughs> not knowing anything more than that, you know what I mean? And But I'm not going to be like, hey guys, let's talk about something else because I don't like that topic. Okay, and so and Marilyn points this out. We don't want to get too much into uh, we don't want to get too much into what uh, what Donald Trump was oh, saying crazy. or doing. I hate, uh, but that's that true because she brings up what I want to she say, does, yeah. which now is I'm something. A, I'm a bad person. Here's something sorry. worse that men do than than that than <laughs> just describing them or describing what they did to them all that stuff. And I think women might do this too. I don't know if women do this. I can't. I've never done it, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, and and Ben, I'll loop back to what you were just saying, but. Men do this. They compare women yeah. to other women with men, yeah. which I think is probably one of the worst things that we do. Yeah. Because, And I'll tell you why. When five men are together, and, and I, I can think of this amongst my college friends, we used to compare women all the time. Like, oh, she's good, but she's not as good looking yeah. as oh, so-and-so. No, she ain't got she nothing ain't on so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then now we're all adults, and we've all like grown up, and like people are getting married and all that yeah. stuff. And there's certain things that you just don't say out loud anymore. Yeah, yeah. But you know that people are still thinking them. Yeah. Which I wish we could just close that door so that wasn't a problem anymore. Yeah. Because the whole idea of appraising women, like my sister was saying, is it, it just it puts value on something that, that we don't necessarily need to attach that much value to, which is basically just looks. Yeah. Because me and you talk about how much we hate that. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know that's, what I mean? No, I mean that's fair. Because it's fair. like, all right, we're good dudes, but... We're not six foot five and like and look like uh, uh, Mike Coulter. You know yeah. what I mean? No idea. Luke Cage, Netflix, bulletproof love, blood <laughs> blood blue love. Blood blue uh, But yeah, we don't look like them. But we hate that comparison. But men do this on a regular basis. We do. We do. I mean. So so okay. So let me ask. No no no. So let me ask. Uh, let me but ask. You had a loss for words. I, you did. You did. So let me ask. So what is like what are you know I, I I hate to play devil's advocate because I I don't I don't have I'm like I don't even believe the the devil's side at all mm -hmm. but what's like what's the line like what just like she's cute and then we're done or like just don't say anything no I I don't think or there's anything like, I, don't... I I I don't want to offend anyone. Like that's what that's like. If if you are offended by a way that I am speaking, I don't have to say anything. Like there's not much I have to do in this world. Mm. So if something that I'm doing freely of my own volition is 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 um, uh, disparaging, disparaging, probably not right word. Uh, disparaging is a word. Okay, disparaging a whole group of people. Mm. I, I can just stop doing that, right? Like I didn't know, and I'll stop. But but like, what? Where's the line? Because to me, what Trump said was disgusting. Absolutely. And I wouldn't even continue to be around people who were having that level of discussion. And that's as a grown-up. When I was 21, I probably heard and said worse things. Mm -hmm. But I think we all have. As I as I grown up, not only have I realized that that's really like super like rude and uncomfortable for those people. Like if we were having these conversations, but the ladies were standing right here, like, hey, she's she's cuter than you. <laughs> like you know what I mean? One, it's like who asked you? Two, it's like okay. Oh, yeah, you don't know what I feel bad about about myself. Like yeah. you don't know what's stopping me from going up to the roof, and that might be it. So you're a jerk. But also, you know, you get to a certain point where you're like, yeah, I mean, I know a bunch of beautiful women, but like, what else do you got? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so once you start to put value on those other things, mm -hmm. then the value of that, you know, it it, it it lowers a lot. Especially as you, you know, you're always told as a kid, like, you know, beauty fades and stuff. And you're like, yeah, sure it does. But as you get older, you're like, no, it does. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not going to be forever, yeah, you know. You never know. I have know. a window of opportunity. It's very rapidly closing. Yeah, yeah, and you never know. So if that's the only thing, if that's our only tie, if that's mm -hmm. my only draw, then, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like, that's, you know, that's that's primal. Like, I'm, when I look at somebody, like, are they, if they're not attractive, I'm, my likelihood to continue to pursue is mm. lowered greatly. Right? Absolutely. Unless I get into a random conversation with them or we, like, bond over something else. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
Where's the line? You started like, off, yeah, where's the line? Then I feel uncomfortable. Now I feel uncomfortable saying anything about anyone ever. No, no. I think it's I think it's okay to admire people, and I think it's okay to discuss that. Um, I think most people do in general. They talk about, you know, beautiful people, how people look, what they think of them, all that stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What I think there's something wrong with is when you have to start talking about things that you can or can't or things that you will or won't do with this yeah, person. Yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah. that's when it, yeah. when it gets all super like exactly. rapey and gropey. Exactly. Yeah, and, that's, and, that, that, that's, and that's yeah, when we can dive into what he's line. saying. Yeah, that's a clear line. Because people have said horrible things about people in, in, in terms of like, for instance, the term butterface, you know what yes. I mean? Or, or most people have said, don't a lot of people to, have said that. Don't listen to any raps that I've ever rapped before, like, 2011. <laughs> no, no, no. No, man. no, you just scrub your past. Uh, but past? Be, uh, yeah, Exactly. <laughs> uh, but I think the idea of, of just reducing people down to their looks or just their anatomy, and that's what I feel like Locker Room Talk actually does. Mm -hmm. It reduces people down mm -hmm. to just anatomical or sexual things. It's also not productive. Like, there's nothing it's in really it. There's, not. nothing, like he there's said, no community in it. Like, no. there's nothing... Well, there is community in it. Well, yeah, but there's <laughs> nothing redemptive about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of conversations that can be had that are at least bring something to the table. Consent, Ben, I see you. He said the woman wasn't there to admit that if she wanted that attention. See, but that's the thing. When we're talking about two consenting... If we're talking about two consenting adults that want to talk like that to each other, that that's, 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 that's none of my business. You know what I mean? It's none of my business. But uh, if we're talking about people that aren't even included in the conversation, they have no rights to what you say or do, yeah. and you are just going in about them. To me, there's just something about that that doesn't sit right with me. And this is coming from a dude who had, I've done it. Now, I've done it. I'm not going to say I haven't done it. I've done it. I stopped doing it. Within the last seven to ten years, I stopped doing it. I want to say since college... I just don't talk like that anymore, and it has a lot to do with, with the. It has a lot to do with the people you hang around, and all that yeah. stuff, and then you, you, like even even I was never the leader, but even when I tried to be, it just wasn't. It didn't even sound natural coming from me, you know. Yeah. But then, like he's he's talking about assault. Uh, what's Marilyn saying? See, respect women, drunk. Good lord, Marilyn, that's a really long comment. <laughs> I've never seen the yeah, C more button. Even, yeah, I've never seen the C more button hey, in Facebook yeah, keep before. It to, yeah, keep it to like 30 words because after that, you yeah. can't see it anymore. Growing up, now it's too short. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a period and exclamation. Yeah. But, so, but, uh, but like I was saying, I think that's the line. The line is saying, I'm not going to graphically talk yeah. about this person's anatomy yeah, and yeah, sexually yeah. Yeah. with my home. And I, again, and I've done it. And I don't want anybody to say that. To think that I'm coming from a high place and talking down, I'm talking about how men can improve, yeah, yeah. how we can do better, and we can do it, forward. and we can do it in a community, in the same, in the same communities, in the same communities where we're having the conversation, somebody can end it. Hey, absolutely, be like, come on, man, no, that's let's a, not do that's that. a person. Stop doing yeah, yeah. that. And and also, and also, and also, what happens when you do that is you either make the person kind of feel bad and reevaluate themselves, and then they stop, or that person like resents you for that, and then you they're not a part of the community anymore. Absolutely, which is also fine. You can go live on That's an fine. island. Yeah. And just Get out of here. Discussing yeah. on that island, I just described segregation. But listen, <laughs> the moral, <laughs> but the story, it's not racial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the moral of the story. The moral of the story is it's 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 just like. It's just, it's just gross, man. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to have a conversation about a woman that I couldn't also turn around and say it to her face. So if I think a woman is gorgeous, I feel comfortable saying that to her, mm. whether we have a rapport or not. Mm. Although I don't feel entitled to mm. a response from her. Entitled. But I feel comfortable saying it to her if she's willing to listen. If she's willing but, to but listen. But if I start talking about her body parts, I probably don't feel comfortable having that conversation with her, especially replaying to her everybody else's reaction to those comments. Like that's where it gets seedy and gross for me. And so I feel like to support humans, mm -hmm. right, just in the human environment, just, you know, interactions with people, I think we should just cut that up. Oh, Caitlin joined. What up, Caitlin? Yo, yo. Oh, okay. So just, yeah. uh, all right. So let's put that to the side and let's just talk. Uh, so we're, we're settled. Like locker room talk is something that 
we shouldn't we shouldn't be a thing. No. It shouldn't be something we're it's, engaged it's, in. It's ill defined, also. Like it's ill defined. I, I feel like it's not fair to call it locker room talk because I feel like it doesn't. Uh, it should be applied to. Well, the he person, was at work not the too. Place. <laughs> right. It should be applied you were at to work, the person, dude. not the place. You were in a locker many, room. How many like how many like athletes took to like Facebook or Twitter and was like, I don't. I don't not you know. in my locker room. Yeah. What? <laughs> not up in here. Yeah. Not in Harlem. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know what kind of locker rooms, but think about it. If you're in like Pee Wee football, you're talking about cookies. If you're a professional athlete, you're talking about your check or yeah. you're trying to get back home to your kids. Absolutely. Like who's what's locker like a like you know some kind of like you know Stanford locker room with uh, oh with Stanford rapist Brock Turner <laughs> that's the only kind of locker room I think they'd be having that kind of conversation with and, what, what's and dude up to? I want to know I want to know what he's doing all the time I want to know what he's doing all the time all the all the time I want to know what you know Stanford what though I kind of just I just kind of want to hide behind a bush and just wait till he's doing something enjoyable like about to drink a milkshake and, <laughs> and just slap it out of his and head. run and just <laughs> like don't come out and just run. I don't want to beat him up. I don't want to do no, anything. I just want to, ruin I just want to do little, little, little annoying things. Like like steal his remote and then exactly. just drive past his house and change the channel. <laughs> yeah, just little stuff that yeah. will just bother him forever. Where he's like by himself doing something mm-hmm. and and he can't stop us from from changing his interaction with yeah. whatever he's yeah, doing. Yeah, absolutely. Just, yes, that. That's I think that's the way worse than you know. Yeah. I mean, also jail. But anyway. No, I mean clearly, <laughs> yeah, clearly prison's not effective for him. I think this would this would teach him more of a lesson. I, I think so. Oh, to be haunted. Here we go. Okay. Just real life haunted. <laughs> Punishment for Stanford rapist Brock Turner. I'm all ears. Okay. So rape is about control. Yes. We should remove all control from his life. Any anything he can control, we he can't everything he can control. He has to ask for permission. Absolutely. For anything that goes on. We pick the clothes he wears on his back. Yep. We pick the job that he goes to. Yep. We pick how long he gets to sleep. Yep. We pick what he eats. Yep. And we there's get, no patterns to it either. None. No patterns. Today none. you get to sleep from one a.m. to two a.m. Tomorrow <laughs> no it. sleep. <laughs> the next day all day sleep. <laughs> Don't open your eyes. Even if Yo. you're not sleep, keep your eyes closed. That's twenty four hours. That's the new. That is that should be his punishment. Yeah. and I, it's and no matter what. what. And it, and if he does that for a full year, mm-hmm. then time served. Yeah, time and, served. And you know what? And I would do, I would totally donate to the GoFundMe to pay a person to do that for him for three absolutely five days. I totally absolutely. Do. I got a bill on it. Who, who's with me? Yeah, we can start that right now. Just total control of his life. Yeah, we pick it. Eat, sleep, work, play, all of that. We get to pick it all. No play. No, no, no. Like whatever. We get to choose what he does though. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, so it's like like he can play Mario Kart. We've got to play the same ro- the same road every time, every the single track, time, every, every single, single time. time. And, and he's got to be like, and he's got to be win. like Bowser. Yeah, yeah. If he's about to win, we just smack the controller. He's gonna be like, you can't win. Stop winning. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? No, we have to play? make him lose, and, yeah. Be, yeah. and you have to smile while you do it. Little things. Sorry, like this that. is torturous. Yeah, this really is. Okay, all right. Uh, the other thing was just yeah. quick. Who you got in the debate tomorrow? <laughs> we're, we're <frozen> again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you said Hillary. <laughs> Wait, I mean, like what? Like what do you? I don't know, man. I don't have a dog in this fight. Hillary, I'm just gonna vote. I'm just gonna go vote for Hillary. <laughs> you I'm know not really like. I don't think she's great, but I guess this, this is my thing about Hillary. I like my villains well spoken and normal. Yes. If you're gonna be, you know what I mean. If you're gonna be a villain, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to vote for it. a weirdo. If you're gonna be a bad person, <laughs> be a reserve. Like, yeah. like at least I feel like. While Hillary might, you know, I don't know, I don't think she's the most honest person, and I don't think she's the most stand-up person, but at least I, at least the day after she's elected, we won't, won't be the day that World War Three started. You know what I mean? I feel like Trump will send an email or a text to the wrong person. You know what he I mean? Trump will so just... angry so fast. Like, like some, somebody's going to say something to him. There's, it's just so There's no diplomacy at all. Bill, I've been, a... we're not... We're not Hillary fans. That's what we're saying. He's a dip, he's a diplomat with no diplomacy. Absolutely. Or he will be a diplomat yeah. with no diplomacy. Also, I guess I guess I mean obviously we can have this kind of, this kind of, there's nothing we're gonna say right now that hasn't been said before. But no. I think my biggest problem with him is he has no background. No. Do you know what you have to have to like like think about like experience. your first job? Like they wanted you to have a certain number of experience. like straight out of college you gotta have twenty years of experience, you gotta have all kinds of certifications that you couldn't even possibly have known about because you just walked out of college. Mm-hmm. You gotta have this much experience, this degree. Trump just had to have enough money to run and he was running. And, and he's running. It. And that's it from a small loan. How much was this small loan? <laughs> yeah, a small loan of a million dollars from his father. A small loan. If I can get a small loan of a million dollars from my father, you know what I'd be doing right now? I'd be Dame Dad. <laughs> that's who I'd be. I have a failed record company and a broken relationship with two of my best friends. There you go. That's who I would be. Oh, uh, my cousin died. Um, yeah, Ben. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? All right, Ben. Yeah, that's fine, but we don't. I like Joker type villains. 
But that's fine. It does, the, none of that impedes her from the parts of her that we don't like. She's literally the most qualified in history. You know what? I, I'm not I still think that's that. rhetoric, though, man, when people say that. Because I, you know what? Though? They say that, and I'm like, I, I what am, are they basing that on? Okay, so this is the, this is the, how they're framing that. They're that's framing true. that as saying that because she's if there was a man that had the same stats that Hillary had, people would be like, oh, snap, like, this person should be that. Like, I don't disagree with that. However, I still think that's rhetoric. I think they're basically trying to say that she has more credit than she... I don't know. Yeah, you know, I like Hillary. I mean, you know, I don't like Hillary. I mean, I mean, no, I don't I mean, like now, Hillary. Now, I don't know. Now, now I'm you, torn. Let me tell you one very unique thing that Hillary brings to the table that no other president thus far has ever been able to bring to the table. Mm. She has been the wife of a president. Oh! I don't... Where are, you, where are you going with that? Uh, she's seen it for eight years. Mm. <laughs> mm. I mean, who else, right? Who else has been that close to the presidency for eight years before they ran for president? That's true. You know I what mean, I mean? I mean, I, I, the I vice, the way, the whatever way, vice president okay. was in office with an eight-year president. Right, that, so let's get Biden up last there. Let's get Biden up there then. I, but he didn't want to run. He didn't want to run. I don't know. What did Biden really do while he was in office, though? I never really heard of him doing anything. He was always just I mean, kind of yeah, hanging out, being like, cool yeah, behind Obama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of being a shippy all the time. That's it. Just, but I don't even see Biden. Not a, he was the cool uncle. I don't even see Biden participating in locker room talk. I don't know. I was like, you think so? I you think, think Biden, Biden, Biden would be in that locker room First of all, what he did to Anita Hill, Biden, like, is not okay with me. I don't know anything about that. Oh, man, you need to look. Man, you need to watch more stuff and do yeah. more things. Well, I watched The Office over and over again. Okay, stop. Oh. You need to look at. Uh, it's called uh, Confirmation. It's okay. on HBO. Okay. Yeah. Not even the British office, though. Just the American office over and over again. Absolutely. I see that. Oh, Mary's here. What up, Mary? Mary. Mary and when? Um, okay. That's all I have, and okay. I'm starting to sweat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know why it's hot in here. It's real hot in here. Uh, that being said, I hope everybody's enjoying the show. Uh, we're looking to make a big change coming in January, so stay tuned for all the updates with that. Uh, again, listen to Mass Potentials podcast. Talk aloud, saying nothing. If you want to give a little plug, go right ahead. T L A S N show at gmail.com. If you have any advice questions or if you'd like to be on the show, it's an advice podcast. We have a lot of fun. We talk about a lot of nonsense um, loudly and we say a lot of nothing also loudly. So if you have an advice question, anything, relationships, work, you know, whatever, just advice. Um, ask a couple guys who maybe know, maybe you don't know, but it'll be funny anyway. And uh, TLASN.net to listen to our episodes and subscribe on Stitcher and Spreaker and iTunes and SoundCloud. We all out there. Make sure you like and rate on iTunes so it'll go up the charts. Uh, and I think that's all I have. Again, 10 Minutes with Ronald. Oh, it's BigRon.com. I am releasing the show on the website from now on. I'm also still reviewing stuff. Okay. I just watched a show called Hello Ladies that you should watch. You, 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 you IM'd me about it and I didn't get a chance to watch it. It's on it. HBO, man. What is it about, ladies? Uh, you should watch it. Okay. You should, because it, it covers something. There's a, a powerful scene in there that covers something you and I actually talked about. Okay. And they actually talked about it. It was crazy. But okay. yeah, uh, again, everybody, yeah, you are like, stay tuned. Thank Things are going to get better. We're going to get a better camera. We're going to get more mics. The podcast is going to start in January. Everyone keep paying attention. If you haven't, please... I implore and beseech each and every one of you, go to YouTube and subscribe. You see my you? hand getting closer. Yeah. yeah, I did a long time ago. But do you see subscribe. my hand closer? Subscribe. Please subscribe. Please. Please subscribe on YouTube. Please. Boy. Please oh, okay. subscribe on YouTube. Please. Please subscribe on YouTube. All right. That's all I got. That was, that was gonna, okay. All right. So no, uh, you already know this has been yet another episode of 10 minutes with ronald the show that nobody asked for yet 14 of you are watching and and um and, it, and it's over now so uh it's done